Hello, good afternoon, everyone. Welcome again to another webinar hosted by Secure Intelligence Limited. And I'm your host for today. My name is Chine. I am an SDR at SEAL. Okay, so um, before we go into the webinar proper, I'd like to confirm that you all can hear me. Please, if you can hear me, give some reaction using the um, reaction icon below. All right. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yes, I can see a lot of reaction. All right. So welcome again to today's webinar. And as always, Secure Intelligence webinar promises to be insightful, exciting, and it's always fun to be here. Really. So um, going into the webinar proper, I would like to give us an update on our housekeeping rules. Okay, first, I want you to um, understand that this session is being recorded and you can always visit our YouTube channel at SEAL um, underscore Teams on YouTube to get the um, replay of this webinar. So in case you're going to miss out on any parts of the webinar due to um, network challenges or, you know, one of those things, don't worry, we have you covered. All right, so we also want you to understand that you can raise your hands, you can uh, make reactions during the course of the webinar. If you look below your screen, you will see a, a button that has a smiley face. Okay, so you can click on that um, icon and it would show you different reactions that you can make during the webinar. You can give a thumbs up, you can you know appreciate by clapping and a lot more. You can also laugh during the course of the webinar. All right, so lastly, there's a Q&A &A, a comment session in this webinar. So please feel free to make use of it. If you have questions, you have comments, and um, there's something you need clarification on during the course of the webinar, you don't have to wait till the end of the webinar. Just drop your questions in the Q&A comment session, and every question will be attended to during the webinar and also after the webinar. All right, so, and then for those of, of you who are joining us for the first time, I would like to say a very big welcome. Thank you for joining today's webinar. It was great to have you in the webinar. And we are Secure Intelligence Limited. And at SEAL Teams, we love to see ourselves as solution builders. We apply technology to drive effectiveness, agility, and growth for your business. We are very passionate about the growth of your business. So we are positioned to help enterprises scale globally. And we work with four major pillars. One is the global mindset. So whether you're starting locally and you come in contact with Secure Intelligence Limited, the rest are sure that your business is going to go global. All right. So we also have work with the multi-cloud competence. We are competent when it comes to cloud activities. I will put it like that. All right. And then agility and lastly, growth. Like I said before, we're passionate about the growth of both you as an individual and your business. All right. So without further ado, today, like I said, is a wonderful one. And our topic for today is migrating SAP workloads to AWS Cloud. And to take us into this awesome journey, before I introduce our speaker, um, during the course of this webinar, I will be posting a consultation link. And it is absolutely free. I want us to feel free to use that consultation link if you have questions or you feel that you will not be able to um, ask your questions using the Q&A comment session. So you can click on that link, book a session, and we would, you know, you get to meet with our team of technical experts. And whatever question, whatever concern you have concerning this topic would be addressed. So bringing to the podium, all right, our speaker for today, his name is Olua Muiwa, and he's a specialized workload engineer. When it says somebody knows his onions, that's what I'm talking about. All right, so let's welcome with reactions, you know, clapping of our hands, giving a thumbs up, we were for today's webinar. Thank you, Miwa. You're welcome. Yeah, thank you very much, Nehe. Uh, good day, everyone. Uh, my name is Uluwa Muiwa Agola. I work with uh, Secure Intelligence Limited as a solution architect. Uh, I also work as a specialized workload engineer, just like 
as Nenya has rightly stated. Uh, today we'll be looking at a very interesting topic, uh, which is migrating your SAP workloads from PIDA on-premises or from other cloud service providers to the AWS cloud, right? So uh, on our agenda, we'll, we'll start with uh, an overview of what SAP is. Uh, we'll go deeper into looking at AWS, SAP relationship or alliance over the past years. Uh, we'll also be guiding you on how you can evaluate your current SAP workloads or landscape. Uh, we'll also be looking at uh, key considerations or key areas that you should focus on uh, during the course of your SAP migration, either prior to your migration phase, during your migration phase or post your migration phase. And lastly, we'll be looking at uh, how does this uh, AWS SAP alliance or relationship benefit you as a company or as an organization, right? Uh, next slide, please. So basically, what uh, what is SAP, right? Uh, uh, SAP is it's, it's a leading provider of enterprise resource planning, right? Enterprise resource planning software, right? It's popularly known as ERPs, right? SAP has been around since 1972. So they are not new uh, in this space, right? And due to this, over the past years, they've rolled out different products, right? That helps you streamline and manage your core business processes, right? Uh, these products uh, ranges from different sectors. They're applicable in different sectors, uh, ranging from accounting to tech, uh, to sales, uh, to uh, health, even at the fiscal space of manufacturing, right? Let's say you have an oil oil, oil refinery somewhere and uh, you need to get IoT data from those machines and all that. Uh, SAP as, as a product, uh, that fits into uh, this uh, this space, right? And uh, like I said, SAP is a big company. Uh, most Fortune 500 companies make use of SAP, right? Uh, in 20, uh, 2024, their market capitalization was over uh, $140 billion. And even last year, they made over uh, $35 billion revenue. So uh, it's a very big company, right? Yeah, so on your screen, you can see we have a lot of uh, SAP products, right? Uh, and these products, basically, they help you uh, they streamline your they streamline your business uh your business operations they help you get uh real-time data insights and analytics for you to be able to like make informed decisions both at the lower level and also at boardrooms where top decisions are being made right uh, in regards to your business operations and all these products right like i said they are encompassing right uh sap has an ERP that is encompassing that's where you can consolidate data from all the sources and as it, uh, and definitely have a single uh single source of truth right so i won't uh there's a lot of them on your screen i will not be speaking about all of them but i'll just be picking out like two or three of them to talk about uh sap uh s for ana uh is basically uh sap's flagship uh enterprise resource planning suit uh this product provides uh, real-time uh, insights and it also streamlines your business processes, right? So you can leverage your own SAP S4 on on-prem or on other small cloud provider. You can leverage this. Uh, you can migrate your your SAP workloads to AWS and you leverage AWS scalability, flexibility, and also the cost efficiency side of things, right? <laughs> Also, we're talking about uh, SAP Business Intelligence, well, which is majorly uh, a, a powerful business intelligence tools, right? That provide you strong reporting and an analytical uh, capabilities, right? So, uh, and the good thing about this when you migrate your SAP workloads, let's say you are running SAP Business Intelligence, is that you can integrate it with uh, native AWS uh, analytics services like uh, AWS Glue, AWS Redshift, which is more or less like a Data leak uh, service on AWS, right? Uh, lastly, SAP ANA, which is basically an in memory database and application platform, right? Uh, it also offers you uh, real time processing of data and, and analytics, right? It gives you an enhanced view of what your data is, right? You could scale up, uh, it gives you enhanced security. And definitely, when you have an enhanced view of what your data is, you definitely could make an uh, informed decision in regards to your business. So, next slide, we'll be looking at uh, AWS and the uh, SAP relationship or the alliance over the past years, right? Uh, AWS and SAP uh, started their relationship in the year 2008. And over the past uh, over the past years, they've been rolling out products, right? The first product that was rolled out uh, was in 2011, which is SAP and the in-memory database. 
uh, and then uh, subsequently in 2012, they rolled out SAP Business One. Uh, between 2014 to 2015, uh, SAP AWS Launch Wizard was rolled out and SAP uh, S4 HANA was also uh, rolled out, right? Uh, between 2016 to 2017, uh, SAP Lens for WAF for well acted framework was rolled out and uh, migration orchestration uh, service on AWS was rolled out, right? So AWS launch wizard that I mentioned that was rolled out in 2015 is basically just help you to simplify uh, and automate your deployment processes of on AWS, right? In line with global based standards, right? So you want to migrate your AWS workload, uh, your SAP workloads to AWS and you need a service that can help you streamline this process, a service that could provide a uh, more insight, right? So that could automate this process for you. you. Definitely can make use of AWS Launch Wizard. And for migration orchestrator, right? Uh, it also helps you. It's created majorly for migration purposes, right? Uh, from on prem to AWS, right? So it's, it's, it gives you a step by step approach on how your migration is going to be, uh, including the planning, including your planning phase, uh, your migration process, the executing phase, and also the monitoring phase after post migration, right? Yeah, so going forward, in 2018 to 2019, uh, SAP Data Intelligence and SAP Fiori was released. Uh, in 2020 to 2021, SAP BTP, which is an encompassing platform, and SAP S4 HANA Cloud, right, was was released in beginning 2020 to 2021. And in 2022 to 2023, SAP Analytics Cloud and Graviton instances, which are very powerful instances, was released last year, right? So. Over the past years, uh, AWS and SAP has had a very strong alliance and uh, they've rolled out different products that we, as a company, you as an organization, can leverage on uh, in regards to shipping your product faster, uh, uh, streamlining your business resources, and also achieving your business goal. Next slide, please. Yeah, so this, this is more or less like... Uh, drilling down on what uh, what is obtainable on AWS uh, in regards to their relationship over the past years. Uh, if you look on your screen, these are just a, this is just a picture representation of the different SAP uh, services that you can run on AWS, right? Uh, there are over 80 uh, BTP services that run on AWS, right? And that's the highest you can get on any cloud service providers out there, right? AWS has the largest uh, of functionality or largest uh, of, of base, right, to support SAP workloads. 19 out of these 80 PTP services that run on different cloud providers, service providers, including AWS, uh, 19 of these services only run on AWS, which is a lot, right? So you're dealing with other cloud service providers. Maybe you have a, pro pro a product that you would like to migrate to the cloud, and then you see that other cloud service providers are not supporting 19 of these services, right? You can only find them on AWS, right? So nine publicly available regions uh, for BTP services, right? More than any other cloud service provider. AWS has a global infrastructure that you as a, as an organization, you as a company can leverage on, right? So uh, nine AWS has more regions that support uh, uh, SAP products, which means that you have more regions that can help you ship your products to streamline your process and bring your your solutions faster to your to your end users right because they have more regions on AWS that support uh, these SAP services and then lastly 100% of uh, new uh, BTP services that are rolled out so you can the first place you get them is on AWS before it's subsequently rolled out on all other uh, cloud service providers next slide please yeah so uh, just to add more or to or the products or, or services that are supported on AWS. Uh, if you look at, at your screen, you see we're talking about operating system and also databases here, right? Uh, AWS supports a lot of uh, operating system and a lot of databases ranging from the ones that are widely known and also the ones that are native to SAPs. So you, you run all these uh, operating systems like Red Hat Linux, Oracle Linux, and you need to migrate your SAP workloads to the cloud, you definitely could leverage on, on AWS because all these services, all these products, right, they are supported on AWS, right? In case you are running Microsoft SQL Server, Oracle Database, or even native AWS services, right, like Amazon Aurora, you can integrate it with your SAP workloads, or even if it's native uh, SAP uh, database like SAP MaxDB, other products, SAP and uh, 
all these are supported on AWS. So you don't you don't you don't have anything to worry about in regards to you migrating your Yes, and one thing that we as a company do for our clients over the past years when we migrated SAP workloads, uh, we, because of our expertise in regards to migration of all these uh, uh, workloads to AWS, we tend to advise you on the best fits, on the best services, on the best approach for you to use during the course of your migration. Next slide, please. So what are, so uh, before you migrate your workload, right, uh, you definitely need to do some, I call it some form of soul session, right? So you need to evaluate uh, your current SAP workload, right? You need to look at what are the infrastructure, SAP infrastructure that you have on-prem or on other cloud service providers and uh, what is the architecture, what's the design of your infrastructure? Is it a monolithic design? Is it a, a, is it, is it a distributed design? Or, right, so you, need to look, you need to put that into consideration. Then you also definitely need to look at uh, what are your performance metrics in regards to your SAP workloads, right? You need to look at uh, customization and integrations, right? I know a lot of us, when we run uh, products, SAP products uh, on-prem or on other class service provider, we do some bit of customization to, to align with our business goals or what we intend to achieve with all these products, right? Uh, you definitely need to understand that before you migrate, what uh, customizations have you done? Uh, is it is it applicable on AWS, right? Are you able to like migrate seamlessly to AWS with these customizations and integrations? If not, uh, are there are other services that on AWS that are native to AWS or that AWS supports, right? That could give you these functionalities or even do better than the ones that you are running on prem, right? So those are key considerations you need to make. And then you also need to look at the amount of data that you want to migrate. What's what's your what's, what's the data volume that you have currently within your SAP workloads and uh, how do you intend, uh, you need to put into consideration how you intend to migrate those data, right? You also need to look at uh, how ready are you for you for the migration, right? You've evaluated your current SAP infrastructure, you've looked at your architecture, you've looked at your design. You need to understand, you need to evaluate how ready you are for the migration process, right? In regards to technical readiness or uh, operational readiness, uh, your staffs are they are they well uh, enhanced enough in regards to them uh, migrating SAP workloads to AWS? Uh, if your staffs or your, your personnel are not, or your engineers are not well versatile enough to, to run the migration process, we as a company can do that for you. We have the experience, we have the requisite experience to, to give you a seamless migration phase to AWS. Why you focus on, on the business side of things, right? You definitely also want to look at data integrity and quality, right? Uh, we all know that uh, data is supposed to be complete, it's supposed to be reliable, right? If your data is not complete, it's not reliable. It could, true, it, could, it could give you some bottleneck during the course of your migration phase. So you, you want to look at the format in which your data is and if uh, the, the, during the migration process or where you are, what services you are migrating it to on AWS, if uh, it's applicable, right? If, if it's something that can fit in into what uh, AWS is offering, right? And lastly, you also need to consider security and compliance. Security is a very key point. Uh, we as a company, we, we, we don't joke with security when we deal with uh, uh, our, our own workloads or our customer workloads. And AWS itself does not, do, they don't joke with uh, security and compliance, right? So you definitely need to put into consideration security and compliance in regards to what are the local regulatory laws in regards to the data that you are migrating, uh, what, what is obtainable on AWS and, and all, right? Yeah. So on this slide, we are looking at key consideration for SAP migration. Uh, uh, definitely before you migrate, there, there must be a reason why you want to migrate to uh, to AWS. Maybe, maybe you're coming from on-prem, you've heard about the wonders that has been done in the cloud, uh, how you can innovate uh, faster, how you can uh, ship out product faster, how you can uh, make uh, bring your, your products faster to your user, and how you can even reduce cost, right? Uh, because that's one of our priorities as, as, as a company for our clients, right? So you definitely need to look at your business objective. What are your business objectives? You need to define your migration goals, right? That's the number one key thing you need to do. Then once you've done that, you need to have a migration strategy, a practical migration strategy. Are you trying to, when you're to, during the migration phase, maybe you're migrating uh, an SQL supporting regional database uh, from on-prem, you're migrating it to AWS. 
you, you are doing a lift and shift, you don't want to tinker with anything, you don't want to touch anything, you just take it from MySQL on, on prem, you put it on MySQL uh, database on AWS, right? You are doing the replatforming. Uh, let's say you are taking it away from uh, uh, MySQL on, on, on your local, you are putting it on native AWS MySQL uh, database like uh, Amazon Aurora, right? Which is a managed service on AWS. And then you are doing refactoring. That means maybe you, you've looked at your workload and you see that uh, it is more efficient for you to like, put uh, your 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 data in in a no SQL database. Just an illustration, right? Uh, you, you definitely be thinking that you want to go the refactoring way, right? Once you're done with that, you start thinking about testing and validation at every step of your migration phase. You need to consider proper and effective testing, ranging from functional testing to performance testing, and even your user acceptance testing. Right? So you need to like do a simulated rollout where your users test uh, the make use of this product, maybe your staffs the make use of this uh, product, and see that okay, everything is fine with uh, with what's what is being hosted on the cloud. Right? Once you're done with that, you definitely need to put into consideration risk management, right? What's 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 your RTO, what's your RPO, right? Your downtime, um, how, how long can your products or your or, or, or this SAP workloads, how long can they be off the grid, right? How long can you allow them to be off the grid? You also need to look at data loss, right? Uh, what amount of data can you afford to lose? Imagine if you are working your SAP workloads, you're getting data from, uh, from retails or you are getting data from, let's say, electronic medical record systems in the hospitals. So these are very critical data that you know that you don't want them uh, to be lost, right? You can't afford to lose any data. So you definitely need to put into consideration how much of data can you afford to lose during your migration process. And if you put in, if you've done all those considerations, what are the migration strategies to avoid downtime and also to avoid data loss? Those are, these are key risk management uh, points that you need to look at, right? You also need to also consider chain management, right? Uh, what's your chain management plan? You definitely need to have a chain management, management plan, right? Well, over the years, when we've been working with migrating SAP workloads to the cloud, right? We've noticed that uh, uh, engineers sometimes uh, are not eager to migrate uh, the SAP workloads to the cloud, right? Maybe because it's a relatively new environment to them. And uh, uh, you definitely need to have a chain management plan, right? Where you communicate effectively to your to your engineers, you do a bit of training and support. And that's where we come in as a company, right? Because we have the local site experience, we can train your company, your, your staffs, your engineers on how to go about uh, having a seamless migration of your SAP workloads uh, to the cloud, right? You identify key personnel among your engineers or your staffs. We train them on how to use this product, how to run the migration process and uh, they do a, a bit of step down training to their colleagues uh and over time people get uh more accustomed your people your, your engineers get more accustomed with uh with uh, the migration process or how to handle SAP workloads in the cloud lastly you also need to look at cost implications i started with business objective you define your migration goals you definitely need to you we all we are all in business because we want to make money right and i believe that uh you you because of that, you need to look at cost implications, right? In regards to how much is it going to cost you? What's the direct cost in regards to you migrating these workloads to AWS? What are the indirect costs that could come, right? With you migrating uh, your workloads to AWS. And definitely, we are all in this for profits, right? You definitely need to, you want to know what are the anticipated benefits, what are the benefits or profits that, that accrue to you from you migrating uh, your workloads to AWS. Next slide, please. So uh, we've looked at what SAP is. We've looked at a, a range of products that they have. We've looked at uh, how AWS and SAP over the years have been able to like build a stable platform where uh, companies that run native SAP services on-prem or in other cloud service providers uh, can migrate to AWS because AWS definitely gives you uh, more benefits, right, uh, than other companies out, than other cloud service providers out there, right? Number one on the list to uh, benefits that you get from migrating your workloads to AWS is innovation, innovation and integration. You are you are able to innovate fast, right? So there are a lot of services on AWS ranging into hundreds, right, ranging from machine learning to IOTs uh, to analytics uh, to serverless, right, and these services 
you are allowed to, do, to integrate them with your SAP workloads, right? You are running SAP workloads on AWS, you can integrate it. It's looking for a very powerful uh, AI model that, that, you know, that can feed into your SAP workloads and draw some recommendations. You definitely can make use of uh, AWS service for you. So it's easier for you to innovate and integrate uh, with AWS, right? And leveraging you know, AWS also has what's called global infrastructure where they have uh, regions, uh, local zones, and also um, uh data centers uh all across the globe right you can leverage on this uh global infrastructure to like make your your sap workloads more available to your to your end users and ship product faster to your users right cost efficiency that's one key area that we come in because we have trained solution architects that have worked extensively with sap workloads right or we know that you are in this to make impact and also you also want to make a uh, profit, right? And we come in here, we, we design a system where through your migration phase uh, to you to post migration, you, 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 you are getting value for these services that you are using on AWS, for these SAP products or services that you are using on AWS at a reduced cost, right? Like I stated earlier on, you get to have scalability and flexibility on AWS. You don't need to start worrying about, uh, you're having a spike in usage and then you need to start worrying about getting more servers uh, to run your SAP workload. These are just, you can automate the whole process and make once you have, you've reached a particular benchmark, right? Uh, automatically uh, scalability is triggered, right? Either horizontal or vertical, right? So these are one of the benefits that you get from uh, the AWS SAP Alliance, right? There is increased agility. I talked about you shipping your product faster. You don't, there are a lot of process you don't need to work, start thinking about. You don't need to start thinking about getting servers and all that because you can easily provision uh, all these to support your SAP workloads uh, in the cloud. And that definitely translates to increased agility across your whole business operations, right? And lastly, uh, enhance security and data protection. Uh, during your migration phase, we as a company, we don't joke with uh, security, both at data at rest and data in transit. Uh, we make sure that uh, security is at the forefront. That is always the number one constitution. Cost can come after because we don't want you, your SAP workloads could be getting uh, critical data from users out there and you don't want the bad guys to, to be able to reach uh, your SAP workloads, right? So AWS has a lot of uh, security services like guard duty, AWS sheet for DDoS attack, uh, AWS WAF, right, inspector and all that, right? And we also make use of third party uh, uh, services like Trend Micro, we are partners with them to secure your SAP workloads uh, in the cloud. Next slide, please. Yeah, so that's pretty it uh, from, uh, from my home end today. Uh, one thing uh, I want you to go on with is that you have SAP workload, you want to like leverage on the, on the benefits that comes with the cloud. Uh, Secure Intelligence Limited is the right company for you to partner with in regards to that. So at this point, I will be handing over to Nene uh, for us to hear from you guys in regards to questions or unique clarifications on how to go about this. Thank you, over to you, Nene. Hi, thank you so much. Um... Thank you so much, Muiwa, for that presentation. Um, it was really awesome. But um, I'm seeing a question here for you in the Q&A session. Um, I don't know if you can see it. What so, did you say? It says, you? can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, I can hear you. OK, there's a question here for you. Imagine okay. a FMCG company that is using SAP on prem on premises or on Azure, expound on one, what are the common costs, challenges that you find when you're working with these kind of customers that they should watch out for, that they should watch out for that should advise them to consider migrating to AWS? Then secondly, which specific SAP workloads should I migrate first and why? But I just want to confirm, do you have access? Can you see this question? No, no, no. no. Okay, okay. okay, no problem. But did you get it? Can you come again, please? You are talking okay. about an FMCG company, a fast moving commodity group company, right? Okay, yes. So yeah. they're using SAP on prem on Azure. So, what are the common cost challenges that you find when you're working with these kind of customers? 
and all the, also the kind of common challenges they should watch out for, you know, when they are considering migrating to AWS. I think that's the first question from this person. Okay. So, uh, so in regards to the first question, right, uh, most times, uh, you know, integrating uh, systems, right, uh, can be very cumbersome. That was why I talked about different considerations that should be made, right, before you even say you want to embark on uh, on on integrating your on migrating your SAP workloads uh, to the cloud. You need to do proper uh, proper evaluation of what you have on ground, right? Because most times when companies say they want to evaluate, they want to migrate, they buy that the cloud is is way cheaper and all that, right? If you don't evaluate your workloads very well. You will see that at the end of the day, you might even be spending more more on the cloud, right? So what we do as a company is that we provide, we guide you through the whole phase. Most times, when companies come to us, like I said, said, if they want to like migrate to the cloud, the most time the first thing they talk about is I'm trying to reduce my cost. I want to reduce my cost, right? But then if you don't do things the proper way, if you don't do proper evaluation of what you have on ground and how it fits into AWS, right? You definitely might not be able to leverage on the cost efficiency type of uh, part of the slide of of, of 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 the cloud right then in regards to, sorry can you come again on the second question okay so for the second question it says which specific sap workload should i migrate first and why so it depends on it depends on what uh what you are trying to do right it depends on what you are trying to do uh it could range from uh your database uh, ranging from your applications you want your developers to come and be developing uh, writing about programming in the cloud right it depends on what your use case is or what you intend to achieve so uh when you tell us what you want to do we get more information in regards to okay this is how your business operates these SAP products that you work that you work on uh on-prem or on other cloud service providers and we look at it we wait vis-a-vis our own experience who guide you on how you should uh on on what uh the right step is in regards to migrating uh to the cloud right so like i stated earlier on, on your number one question watch out for uh i know you talked about cost but you need to watch out for if you've done comprehensive evaluation of what your on-prem uh sap or your or other or on other cloud service provider what what uh, you've done evaluation of what your or your workloads is right before you take the step of of migrating right and then secondly uh it depends like i said it depends on what you are currently running before we can give that kind of professional advice so i need to have have, have a view of what your sap workloads is before i can say this is the first uh product this is the right step for you to take next slide sorry Wow, thank you so much, Miwa. And I hope um, the question was answered to the satisfaction of the person who asked the question. All right, so there's another question here for you. Okay. Um, it says, how does AWS keep SAP workloads secure and compliant with regulations? Uh, yeah, like I said earlier on, uh... Security is, is a key concept that we as a company we don't joke with, right? And even AWS as a as a cloud service provider does not joke with AWS with security. One of the core frameworks or pillars in AWS is security and they run a shared responsibility, uh uh a shared responsibility uh, concept, right? Where AWS has uh they do a bit of, 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 of they do a bit of security on their hand in regards to the infrastructure and you as a client based on what you're running on AWS, you do your own bit of uh, security, right? AWS do, do the security of the cloud. You as a client, you do security in the cloud, right? And uh, one thing I need, like I stated earlier on during the course of my presentation, AWS has a lot of services in regards to security. Aside those native uh, AWS services that we use to secure, our clients' uh, workload. We also make use of third party, uh, third party uh, vendors, right? Like Trend Micro, we make use of third party solutions. We are partners with them to secure uh, these workloads, right? And uh, also, you also need to like understand that 
what during the migration phase, data address and transit, all this needs to be secured. And we have different uh, services on AWS that could help you with that. So it will be so in regards to security, it's, it's security should be pulled out at every point in time, like I stated earlier on. But then we rest assured that with AWS and with us guiding you through your migration phase, uh, you will definitely not have uh, a security concern. All right, thank you so much, Miwa. Thank you for providing this um, clear answer and for the presentation in general. Okay, so um, please, if you still have questions, to see there are a lot of questions coming in today, and um, we will take every one of them. And if you think that you need further clarity um, on a particular aspect of today's topic, the consultation link is already in the Q&A session. So just click on the link and put a consultation session with us and we would clear every doubt that we have and help you with your um, with your situation. Okay, so um, like I said, we are Secure Intelligence Limited and um, we help you at different phases of your business growth. Okay, so if you are um, already in the stage of migration, if you've not started at all or you are currently migrating, whatever level of um, migration of your SAP workloads that you're in, we are here to help you. Okay, so you're not alone and we've got you. All right, so you can also um, book a free consultation for that with our cloud experts and we'll help you with that. You can also get access to free AWS digital training um, exclusively for all attendees. So this is more like a freebie okay a giveaway that we're doing for you because you attended and you stay to the end if you also want to get started in your tech journey you know you're new to tech you want to upskill you can also enroll in any of our SIL academy programs and for the migration we have a team of technical competence okay who would help you in your journey of cloud migration all right so um if there are no further questions, I would like to um, talk to us about our social media platforms. And, you know, you can follow us on these social media platforms without stress. Okay, when you do, I would also encourage you to click on the notification icon so that you can get notified when we have um, upcoming webinars like this. You can check us out at um, on Instagram, we're on Facebook, on LinkedIn, and, of course, on YouTube. Okay, so C underscore teams or C teams. If you just type Secure Intelligence Limited or Secure Intelligence on YouTube, you will see all our past webinars and also this one in case you missed out any particular minute during the course of the webinar. So please feel free, like, um, share also with your friends who you think that will benefit from this um goodies that we have here at Secure Intelligence Limited. So I will be bringing this webinar to a close. And um, um, I would like to say thank you, everyone, for joining. And thank you for staying to the end of the webinar. And I will see you again some other time. Thank you, Muiwa, for coming to this webinar and for your presentation. All right, bye-bye, everyone. Have a lovely day.